begins with immersion. And we're going to talk a lot about this today, about immersion. We'll probably spend most of our day looking at immersion because I think immersion is essential. It's the part of the writing process that we never seem to do enough of. It's the part of the writing process that there's not much about, like to help guide us through immersion. Everyone refers to immersion. Ralph Fletcher refers to immersion. Katie refers to immersion. Lucy refers to immersion when she says, well, we get a lot of books to read poetry first. But I feel like we need to really map out immersion. What books are we going to read? How are we going to read them? What should we really think aloud about as we read this book? You know, I feel like immersion is something we really need to think about. It's not just get a book by Mem and read it aloud. We need to know it first. We need to see where do we want to stop in this book? What do we want our kids to get from this book the first time they hear it? And so all of those beginning lessons focus on interactive read-alouds. These are not mini lessons. And in your packet, which I'm going to give you in a minute, for those of you that don't have a unit, you're getting a whole packet of lessons. So everyone's going to have at least one or two lessons in the whole, from, you know, from each stage of the, of the unit. But those lessons don't look like mini lessons. Those are interactive read-alouds because immersion is about reading aloud the whole text first and just getting to know the author. Think you have, hmm, I wonder what, why the author wrote this, or what did the author want us to know? What's the big idea behind this book? What did the author want us to know? Is there a message there that she wants to tell us or that he wants to tell us? Or even just noticing cool things about it, making personal connections, all the things you do as readers first. That's immersion, okay? I just want to show you something quickly. This is, this is my overview from my binders. My binders are over there. They're real messy because I use them often, and they have post-its in them, and they're highlights, and there's notes, and I'm a very, what do you call that kind of learner? Is there a name for that kind of learner that has to write everything? Visual? That's the visual. I always got confused with those things. But I'm definitely a visual, because I need to write and post it, and that's just how I make sense of everything. So I do want to point out, though, on my overview, you're going to notice that there's 10 books but the immersion gives you five lessons. Those are almost like your touchstone lessons. So basically, there's 10 books, but there's five lessons. You're going to try and read all the books, although some teachers don't get to all of them. They read most of them. That's all right, too. You want to read enough books, though, so they really get the, you know, the voice and the style of the author. And what I tend to do, which we'll be able to do at the end of this day, is I do, I call it companion books. I try and match books up. So I'm going to give you an example of that. All right? And I'm just looking right now. This is my Donald overview. Um, look at day, well, look at day five. Day five is use this shortcut to show how Cruz writes about a memory that evokes feeling. You guys know shortcut, right? I figured that would be a book that you know. That you get, a, your kids get a feeling, right? They're anxious, oh my God, what's gonna happen? They shouldn't have taken that shortcut home, right? There's a lot of feeling and emotion amongst many other things, but as a first time reader, you might focus on the feelings that you get. A good companion book to that is Sail Away. Did you know that? No. You will by the end of today. But by a good, com well you know it now, but you're gonna get to know that book. So see how Sail Away isn't one of the books highlighted? in the immersion lessons, what I do is I see what books aren't highlighted in the immersion lessons, but which ones can I pair up for the same purpose? And I call them companion books. And Sail Away is a good companion book to shortcut because it's also a memory, a real memory. We learn that from the dedication. I always read dedications. That's how you learn a lot about an author is the dedication. And, and Donald actually has a lot of telling dedications. Mem, not, not so much. But Donald, yes. And you realize in Sail Away that also is a memory that evokes a similar kind of anxious feeling. So I, what I like to do is when I'm getting to know the books, is I kind of like to pair books together. What are two books to read side by side? Maybe not in one sitting, but maybe, you know, Monday and Tuesday. Or, ooh, I'm going to just do a quick, I'm going to do one in the morning on Monday, then I'm on the way home, you know, to end the day, I'm going to read this one aloud. So I don't just say, ooh, I'm going to read them, you know, this each day, there's always, like a, there's always thought or purpose behind that. I want to read these two together. Like I like to read Big Mamas before I read Shortcut, sometime before I read Shortcut, because 
Short cup is a small moment from Big Mama's. So I know that I want to read Big Mama's first before I read short cup. Okay, so there's always some kind of thinking behind that. Now, so those immersion is what comes first, and I'm going to fly through this now. 